Hello and welcome. My name is Brandon Wendell and I am the lead instructor for the eMini Think Tank of Wealth Builders HQ. And today in this video, I am going to be discussing a, the Relative Strength Index, which is a tool that I use quite heavily in my trading as a momentum indicator and decision support tool. So it's not the decision maker itself, but it's a support tool that can be used to help you when making decisions to trade or invest in either the futures markets, the currency markets, Forex that would be, equities, or even options on those securities. But before we get started, I just need to remind everybody that I am not a registered broker dealer, and I may look at different securities, but that's not because I'm giving any recommendations. I am just doing that for illustra illustration purposes and discussion. I'm not telling you to trade any of those strategies or securities. I'm not providing you with any recommendations or personalized advice about your activity when it comes to the markets. Uh, this is not tailored to touch any particular person. Also, uh, there is always risk involved when it comes to putting money into the markets. It doesn't matter if you're a trader or investor, there's always going to be risk no matter what you do. Even though we're going to discuss strategies to help limit that risk, you can't eliminate it. Also, I'm not subject to any trading restrictions. I can have positions in security and initiate positions at any time. But that being said, let's go ahead and kick this off and basically take a look, like I said, at the RSI or Relative Strength Index or Relative Strength Indicator as it's sometimes known. It's basically used as a filter for trading decisions. It can also predict the length of an impulse that might be occurring in a security. No matter which security you're looking at or what time frame you're viewing, the proper way to analyze these securities with a multiple time frame analysis perspective. And multiple time frame analysis has been around for a long, long time. And it gives you proper perspective on the markets. The lowest time frame, or which I happen to call the zone time frame, that's where we use we use that chart to help find specifically where we are going to enter or exit our securities. Basically, where the buy zones and sell zones happen to be, and that tells us where the best place with the highest probability and lowest amount of risk happens to be in that market. But we'll also look at well, as I mentioned, entries and exits. One thing I want to mention about that lower time frame, that zone time frame, we don't care about the trend. What's going to happen is we are going to be looking at a trend time frame, which is an intermediate time frame, still related to the smaller one, but not the exact same. And that's where we're going to be finding the trends in which we will be trading. That trend tells us the best direction based on the market conditions for us to put in a position. Lastly, we have what is called the perspective time frame or the higher time frame. And that'll identify key reversal points. It basically tells you where the trends are either going to have a major pause or even a reversal of trend. So in order to analyze one security properly, you need to look at a minimum of three charts on that same security. In this video, however, we're only going to focus on one, and that's going to be the zone time frame. So with the RSI, the RSI, or Relative Strength Index, as I mentioned, measures momentum how powerful and how fast is price moving in a particular direction. So it can measure momentum both in the upside and in the downside. When it comes to that RSI, we use it on the trend time frame to help determine which direction prices are going. We also get to see if the trend is strong or is getting weak. Weak trends tend to pause or even reverse. However, like I said on this video, I'm gonna focus on the zone time frame because it's gonna do a couple things for me. It's gonna help confirm my zones and my entries and make me feel more confident in those entries. And probably more importantly, it's gonna it's gonna help me not lose money. And I don't think anybody enjoys losing money, so we wanna do what we can to help prevent that from happening. And it can help filter out bad or marginal trades that prevent us, well, it doesn't prevent us all the time, but it helps keep us from losing money unnecessarily. That's what we're trying to do here. On that larger time frame I mentioned, we can also use that RSI, and it will help identify when the trends are actually reversing and also confirm zones on that time frame as well. Like I said, though, we're going to focus on that zone time frame for this video, and I'll show you where you can learn more. I do teach that much, much in depth in my courses at the E-mini Think Tank. So if you're more than inter if you're interested in learning more about the RSI and the uses on the other time frames, by all means, join me there. But like I said, in this video, we're going to talk about how we can use this on the zone time frame to help confirm the zones and filter out bad trades. First thing you got to realize about the RSI, I do not use it to let me know if I'm overbought or oversold. It is an oscillator. 
It oscillates around 50, can go as low as zero and as high as 100, can't go beyond those barriers. However, when it oscillates above 50, it's telling us that we have bullish momentum in the security. The further away from 50 you go, meaning closer to 100, the more bullish momentum is being exerted on that security's price. The lower you go below 50, when you oscillate that way, it's measuring bearish momentum and telling you how much bearish momentum you have pushing prices downward. The problem with trying to use these indicators as overbought and oversold is that overbought can become more overbought. That's called an uptrend. And a downtrend can become oversold and more oversold. So just because something's overbought or oversold doesn't mean it's reversing. There are clues to look for to tell when it's going to reverse, but just because it's overbought or oversold, it could continue. Keep that in mind. We're simply looking for momentum, and typically where there's lack of momentum, there's likely to be a lack of movement. Strong momentum begets more movement. And when I use the RSI, first thing I do is I keep the period at 14. That's usually default. Some programs might default to 21. However, 14 is usually the, uh, the best time or period to use. However, the overbought and oversold lines or conditions on your indicator need to be changed. Even though we're not using them for that purpose, we still will use those numbers to help us with judging the strength and the momentum. So overbought needs to be changed from the typical 70 down to 60 and oversold needs to be raised up from the traditional 30 to 40. So my overbought is 60, my oversold is 40 and I keep the period at 14. When it comes to the RSI for trends, we're actually going to apply this, as I mentioned, to the zone time frame, And it can help us when we're looking to enter in the direction of the trend or even sometimes counter trend trades. But the signals we're going to receive on that lower time frame are number one, will the zone hold? I need zones to hold if I'm going to be buying at a buy zone, expecting prices to bounce from that zone. And I need prices to bounce downward from a sell zone so I can enter a new position. It'll also let us know if that trend is likely to continue, in which case we do not want to go against that trend. You know, we want to join at the trend if we're trading in direct, the same direction, but if the trend is likely to break through our zones, we obviously don't want to, to enter with the risk of taking a loss. So it really kind of tells us whether or not we should even get into a position in the first place. And we're going to look at how that works and what to read. So using the RSI as a zone indicator or decision indicator, I should say, support tool, it can be used as a filter. And we want to buy when prices are in our buy zones. Those are our buy zones below current price. When we drop down in those zones, we want to buy. What we don't want to see, however, is lots of bearish pressure when you're coming into a buy zone. So the measurement we look for is if the RSI is below 40, there is too much bearish momentum and that zone is less likely to hold. So therefore you should not buy. If the RSI is anywhere above 40, 41, 47, 60, 87, it doesn't matter. Anything above 40, that means you do not typically have enough bearish pressure to break through that zone and buying is an okay strategy to take. When prices are up in our sell zones and we're in an overall downtrend, we typically, typically want to sell or sell short. However, what we do not want in our price on that zone time frame is too much bullish pressure. If we have too much bullish pressure, it could carry price through the zones. So when it comes to a sell zone, if the RSI is above 60, that's too much bullish momentum for the zone to hold. It's not a good opportunity and we do not sell. So it's a pretty simple filter. Looking to buy, make sure RSI is not below 40. Looking to sell, make sure the RSI is not above 60. This should be on the time frame in which you are making your trading decisions. So I have a kind of a little saying to help me remember this. At the sell zone, if RSI is greater than 60, it's trying to tell, do not sell. And what will usually happen, once again, if the RSI is at 65, 68, 74, doesn't matter. Anything above 60, there's too much bullish momentum Selling is not a wise decision in that strong bullish momentum.
the zone's more likely to break. At the buy zone, if the RSI is below 40, do not buy the zone as a lie. Well, remember, if it's below 40, that's a lot of bearish momentum. And if you have too much bearish momentum, you are very likely to break downward below the zone and therefore stop you out. So if we were below 40 as prices are entering into the zone, probably not a good idea to step in front of that and jump and basically buy when there's too much bearish momentum. It's likely to carry you through. When prices are between 40 and 60, you're all clear to go. As a matter of fact, anything above 40, you're okay. So if the RSI was at 60, as you're hitting a buy zone, you're okay to buy. You just cannot sell in a sell zone if that same scenario takes place. So if we go out to some charts, we can take a look at how this works. It doesn't matter the security. It doesn't matter the time frame. It works on every time frame. works on every security. I've taught all around the world. So I've actually applied this to other markets such as India, South Korea, Australia, England. So I've known it works on different price charts and different securities. Anyway, looking at this, you can see that as prices came down in the middle, we had a little buy zone here on the left, drop, base, rally, wasn't even the strongest of zones. And prices as it came in were above 40. You can see my 40 and my 60 line it says right here, 14 periods, 60, 40. And we were able to bounce and hold that zone and get a move to the upside. It wasn't a very strong move to the upside. We could have had a problem with the trend. I don't know. When we came back down again, we actually hit the second time. Once again, the RSI was well above 40, which means the zone should hold. And sure enough, it did. We got a little bit of a bounce there, actually a little faster than we had previously. However, the third time down to the zone, you can see the big red candle as it was forming. We eventually were breaking below 40 as we were coming into that zone. And sure enough, the zone did not hold. So whenever the, the RSI is below 40 while prices are at a buy zone do not buy the zone is a lie conversely when you're looking at a supply zone or sell zone that you're looking to get into for a short you want to make sure that you do not have too much bullish momentum here we have drop base and drop prices rallied into that area and you can see as it touched the zone we were nowhere near 60. since we're well below 60 we do not have enough bullish momentum to break through the zone you can go ahead and sell. It didn't touch here, it was close, but it didn't touch. Came back up again, and as we tested the zone, we are below 60, therefore the zone held once more. As we come up another time, it's definitely telling us do not sell. You can see the RSI is above 60. So it's trying to tell do not sell. Well, if you had sold there, you might've made a little bit of profit, but not a lot. In comparison to the previous moves down, even this one was much greater than the one that happened while the RSI was too high. It hit again, once again, the RSI too high, got a little bit of a move down, and eventually we hit that again with the RSI above 60, and we were able to break through. So normally you will be able to break through a zone if you have enough bullish momentum and it takes the RSI above 60. Just a couple more examples here, looking at a different supply zone a little bit further out. You can see we had rally, base, and a strong drop right there, much better zone. Prices came into the zone, didn't spend it much time there. You can see we just came in, wicked right out of it, and that's because we didn't have a lot of bullish momentum. The RSI was well below 60 as we entered into that sell zone. It took us all the way down to this rally, base, rally, which was a buy zone. As we came into the buy zone, RSI was not below 60. Okay, it eventually tried to tease and go a little below that, I'm sorry, below 40, excuse me. Didn't go below 40 as we were entering into the zone and the zone held for us. On the right-hand side, as we came back up, you can easily see we went above 60. The program turns the RSI in different colors when it breaks below 40 or above 60. Here, we were above 60. We had too much bullish momentum and we carried through that zone. So that's a really simple way of looking at the markets as you were getting ready to enter into the position. It doesn't matter what the RSI was looking like or reading when the zone was formed. It's when you return to the zone, when you're deciding to either buy or sell, where is that RSI? Below 40, do not buy. Above 60, do not sell. 
You just have too much momentum. The zone's not likely to hold. Now, I'd like to say in technical analysis, everything works except for when it doesn't. And that's the problem. This is not foolproof. Nothing in trading or investing works 100% of the time. So we do have to be aware there may be some positions that you miss because of the filter of the RSI. However, that is very few in comparison to the number of trades that this will keep you out of that would have cost you money had you gotten in. So I'm okay with that. And there's also some exceptions to this as well. One of the main things we want to look for when it comes to the RSI is what's called a pattern for a signal. And the signals we can get are whether we should buy or sell and whether or not the zone is likely to hold. So we have two different warning signals that we get when it comes to the RSI. There's others, but these are the main ones are called positive divergence and negative divergence. So positive divergence and negative divergence. When it comes to the positive diver, I'm sorry, negative divergence, negative divergence, we're in a bullish trend or moving up into a sell zone. By the way, this is the only indication you will get while you were actually at the zone other than being below, oops, <laughs> sorry, my training platform open there. Final bell just closed. Uh, but you can see this will be the only signal we will actually get while prices are actually at our sell zone. And what occurs is that prices are moving higher, making higher highs. And of course, they should be making higher lows as well. However, when prices make the higher high, if the indicator is showing a lower high, that means there is now less momentum than there was on the previous high. That is not a trend that is likely to continue. If you are moving to new highs, price should be doing it with increased momentum, not decreased momentum. So if you see a negative divergence, once again, price is making higher highs, the indicator making the same or lower highs. If this occurs at a sell zone, it's confirming the zone is likely to work, even if this occurs above 60. If it occurs below 60, that's even better. Higher probability that your short is likely to work. Now, if you see this divergence occurring, but you are not yet at a sell zone, only expect a correction or a little bit of a pullback in price, not a reversal. But this is one of the best signals I can look for. If I happen to get this signal while we are in our sell zone, it basically confirms that I should definitely be going short. For the bearish trend reversal moving to the upside as we're moving down towards our buy zones or demand zones whatever you want to refer to them as prices are typically making lower lows so you get low lower low however if the indicator is making either the same or slightly or even higher low that is a positive divergence Again, the prices are making lower lows. The indicator is basically saying with the same or higher low, we don't have enough bearish momentum to make these new lows. For downtrends to continue, you should have increased bearish momentum, not decreased. If this positive divergence occurs where that second low is at a buy zone, it's confirming the zone is very highly likely to work, very probable, and you should be buying. Even if this occurs while you're below 40. Okay, if it doesn't occur at a zone, you're simply going to get a pullback or a correction in your trend. You might be able to stay in your security, wait for the correction, maybe even add more to your winner as it would likely continue to move down. But if this divergence occurs while you're at a buy zone, expect prices to turn from that buy zone back upwards. It's a high probability. So when you are buying with the RSI below 40, I just mentioned, you're okay to buy if there's positive divergence. However, anytime prices start to move up and the RSI was below 40 at the beginning of the move up, you are not likely to make a new high without a correction first. So if you do see the positive divergence, just keep that in mind. You're going to get a, a little bit of a pullback before you make new highs, or you can simply wait to get in until that correction actually occurs. It's your choice. There's no wrong way to do that other than don't ignore the signals and take trades when you shouldn't be, right? We don't want to overtrade. So if we're above 60 in a downtrend and we want to go short, it's okay to do that as long as we have a negative divergence. However, if a move down begins while the RSI is above 60, you're not likely to make new lows without, again, another pullback, a correction. 
So you can enter and simply just be aware there's going to be a correction, or you can simply wait for the correction to occur before you get into the position. So going out to a chart to kind of view this, we can see there's a move to the downside here. The impulse down had a recent high way up there. And as we move down, the lower low was made in price. However, there was a higher low made on the indicator. That's the positive divergence I was talking to or talking about. You'll notice the positive divergence is occurring below 40. So normally you don't buy. Okay, demand is a lie. However, because you're having positive divergence, you could buy. You just have to realize the subsequent rally is not going to take you above recent highs without a correction first. And that's exactly what happened. We pulled it, we rallied up, pulled back. Okay, but because we were below 40, we on this rally up, we could not get above the previous highs without that correction. When we have another move down here, a little bit later, you see this move down, we were left with this recent high. At this low, we were actually at a buy zone here. You have drop, base, and rally. When we made that low, the RSI was above 40. Since we were above 40, our move up was easily able to take out the previous high. And that's typically going to happen on any move. If you see that you get a, a correction in price, you get a little pullback, and you don't go below 40, you're likely to keep going up. Let's see, if I take this out, actually, we can go to a live chart here. Let's take a look at the, well, yes. Take a look at the S&P 500, and I'll go out to a bigger picture here. We'll go to a daily chart. And looking at the daily chart, if we take this back a little bit here to October of last year, okay? What I can see is that here's a low that started. Let me get some drawing tools up. There's a low, and that low started while we were below 40. That means the next move up is going to have difficulty breaking recent highs, and the most recent high was right there, without a correction. So what happened? We'll zoom in a little more on this. As you can see, we're moving up, moving up, moving up, stalling out with red and green candles. That's our correction going on. You can see we made a high, lower high, lower low. There's your pullback. Now, as we did this little pullback, whoops, wrong tool. In this pullback that we just had, we are not below 40. What does that mean? We're going to take out the high now in the rally. There it goes. And we're well above 60. So now we're definitely in a bullish trend. We're getting a little pullback here. Let's see. There it is. Yeah, let's just move this. Be easier. Now, here's your most recent high. And we have made a correction down to this point. During that correction, we never went below 40, as you can see. That means our next move up should be able to take out that previous high. So if you've been sitting in a long position, this may encourage you to stay in that long position, ignore any uh, warning signals it's pulling back because you're going to make new highs eventually. Oops, so went down a little lower. So unfortunately, it was a false signal. Again, that can happen. And now we are below 40. Here we are making a low. And as we come out of that low, we were below 40, which means if you were buying that low, you're not going to get above 34.52 as a high without some sort of correction. Prices move up. <laughs> And I guess I didn't pick the best examples because this one actually did. So as I was saying before, this is not foolproof. There are going to be times that it does tell you something and it does just the opposite of that. So it's not foolproof 100%, that's for sure. But it works more often than it doesn't. Here's another pullback. With this pullback, if you had been in a long position, there's no reason to panic. Because on that correction, as you can see, we are not going below 40 we're not even going below 50. We're barely below 60. What does that mean? We're going to go up and make new highs. And we did. Pulling back again. Once more, we have a high. 
and this is beneficial. People always ask me, should I be getting out? Should I stay in? Should I get out? Well, if the trend's not telling you to get out, stay in. And you can see right here, we're pulling back. We're not below 40, so we should probably stay in. This honestly works better on the trend time frame than it does on the zone time frame for staying in a trade. But at the very least, we made this low. We have a higher low and higher high in price. We should be able to take out 37.06. And there it was, moved up higher. So we keep seeing little pullbacks. All these pullbacks, people don't need to panic. Why? Because we're never getting below 40. Without going below 40, you should continue to make new highs. Even here, that was a pretty significant pullback in January. But RSI was low, but never went below 40. What does that mean? New highs should be made. And sure enough, they were. So looking at the other direction, if you're moving up, you can see in this case, we actually had divergence as well. So you, prices were making new highs, but the indicator was not. That's a negative divergence. And the divergence occurred above 60. That means we should drop, but the move down will not take out prior lows without a correction. Sure enough, there's your move down. Couldn't get below the previous low and we had a correction. On the correction, however, we failed to get above 60. So prices made fresh lows. If we go back, probably could do this on the daily chart here to, nope, need to go to a continuous chart for this. Same security, uh, what did I do here? S&P futures, continuous chart, we'll stay on the daily here. And let's clean up the chart. So we'll go back to late 2019, early 2020. Actually, I need a little more data here. Here we go. And, well, 2018 even. In 2018, you can see that we started moving down. Prices were trying to move up, making higher highs. The indicator, however, was not. That's your negative divergence. It was not signaling a trend change yet, though. The reason why it was not signaling a trend change was we made a high and we're still above 60. That changed very quickly, however, as we started dropping and went below 40. So now you can see below 40, we rally up. We can't make new highs. Below 40, we have a positive divergence. Do it this way. Prices are moving down, but the indicator is making higher lows, isn't it? Positive divergence, that's suggesting prices are going to move upwards very soon. But because this is occurring below 40, we are not going to be able to breach the prior highs. We went up to the prior high and stalled out. Look at that. So it was pretty significant to tell us exactly where this was likely to go or not go. And because we started the move off the lows from below 40, we couldn't make a new high without a correction. Here's our correction. Now that we're correcting down, you'll notice prices are here making a low. However, the indicator is not going below 40, is it? Since price is moving down, but the indicator is not below 40, the next move up should be able to take out the recent high. Let's take a look and see what happens. Well, we did never move up yet. Still in that move down. So now we have another bottom. And we are below 40. We do have a positive divergence. Notice prices are making some lower lows right at the end there, but the indicator isn't. It's kind of just a subtle little one. But it's there. And there, prices moved up. 
we're back up to the recent high. Remember, we started from below 40. That means we're probably not going to break that high without a correction. So you just got to be aware of the correction is possibly going to happen there. And there it is. We pulled back down. So a couple times that worked. The last two major lows that were put in there and there, neither one of those broke the recent highs because both of those moves started from below 40. And we continue to move down in the bearish trend. Once more, we make new lows. But each one of those lows was below 40, which means as we're moving up, we are not going to be able to make new highs without some sort of correction first. This might have been the correction right there. Notice we pulled back just slightly, did not go below 40. Now we should be able to take off. And there it goes. Those are some of the exceptions you can get for the RSI. If you want to learn more about this, as I mentioned, there's a lot more to this. This is just a simple thing. I can use the RSI as a filter for my trades. If we are looking to buy and the RSI is below 40, do not buy. If I'm looking to sell and the RSI is above 60, too much bullish momentum, do not sell. However, there's a lot more, as I mentioned. You can learn a lot more about the trends and how to use this as a trend indicator, as well as understanding when the trends are getting weak or when they're going to reverse. And you can learn all this with me in the E-mini Think Tank. I have the link right there if you're interested in joining me. Uh, we do do a free week, two, free two-week trial if you join doing the quarterly subscription. So you can try it out with no strings attached. Uh, what happens is you sign up for the E-mini Think Tank and you get access basically to three live courses a week. We do a two-hour course on Monday evenings. And we see that at the bottom right here from Monday evenings, 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern. We also have two morning sessions, Wednesday and Thursdays, both at 90, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Eastern, where we look at the market's live data and I analyze and utilize what we learn in the class. So we come up with a bunch of trade ideas and I share those with you as well as dissect them. Additionally, there's a bunch of recorded on-demand education. And in that on-demand education are the remainder of the lessons on how to use the RSI in that zone time frame, as well as the trend time frame and the perspective time frame to make your trades a little bit better. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you did. You can subscribe to my channel and also, like I said, click the link and join me in the e-mini think tank. If you have any questions, let me know. I enjoyed doing this for you and hope to see you again soon in another video.